time for stories to start your morning. It ain't bragging if you got it, though, Nick. <laughs> Love the guys I work with. Brought to you by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. When Baker Mayfield came in to relieve Tyrod Taylor in the Jets game Thursday night, nobody was surprised. Nobody except the entire Jets defense. Jets safety, Jamal Adams, said they were not prepared for Baker Mayfield. See, are you surprised by this? No, I'm not surprised. Now, I predicted that Baker Mayfield would go in this game because I know Todd Haley, and I saw how he had to call plays. So I could read the writing on the wall. Todd and them were trying to protect him. Now, he got Nick, but I believe he was going to get benched because he was not playing the type of quarterback that Todd Haley and Hugh require to run their offense. So, no, I'm not that surprised. I'm more surprised that Jamal admitted it. Yeah. Well, and maybe they would have spent a little time preparing for the possibility of playing Baker if this game were on a Sunday. But they were playing on a Thursday. Well, so you don't it, it, it's one it's it's a combination of both. They were in a tough spot. It's early in the season and nothing had to come out of Cleveland that Baker might play. Right. And so I the the admitting it is You just can't tell the truth in that kind of right. situation. You gotta keep that to yourself. <laughs> yes. okay. All right, moving on to golf. After Tiger Woods win at the tour championship, Phil Mickelson said it is best I've ever seen him swing the club, which doesn't fare well for their things being one on one match. See, how would you grade Tiger's game right now, as we said? His game is fairly amazing. Now, when Tiger at his peak, there are 10 others that could challenge him week in and week out. Now, with all the great young players we have in the world, I believe the competition is stiffer now. Tiger's changed his swing like four or five times, but I believe there was key th two things that really moved us forward for Tiger. One was the technology that he and his driver made that he had absolutely great driver of the golf ball at any other point in his career and sometimes you got to do this you have a good relationship with someone but you got to put your foot down just to let them know that you're serious tiger put that putter he did he put her in the trunk mm -hmm. all right and then she realized she had a good thing and said let me out of here i'm the willing Scotty to fight putter? For, i'm willing to fight for this relationship so he got back together with her and now they're all warm and fuzzy uh, so that driver and that putter had to bring the old girl back into the relationship. Yep. Got you know. it. It happens sometimes. And, and on Phil's side of things, I think I know what Phil's doing here. Phil's got that match with Tiger, yes. that $10 million pay-per-view. He, he, Phil was about a plus 160 before this week. Middle of this week, it was about 180. Tiger won, he was plus 220. I think Phil's just trying to build Tiger up so okay. Phil can bet on himself at like three to one. <laughs> that, that, See, that's definitely on the board. Oh yeah, because Phil's gonna be gambling while he's gambling and gambling. Don't put them in the Ryder Cup together because they're gonna be. We gotta play against the Europeans. Absolutely. All right, he, they're gonna be gambling against each other during the match. Right. We don't need that. <laughs> All right. With all eyes on LeBron James at Lakers media day, Luke Walton shifted the focus by announcing Rajon Rondo will be the Lakers starting point guard. Which report said, All right, that's great. But what about LeBron? This, as Lonzo Ball continues to recover from off-season knee surgery, what do you think, Nick? Good decision to go with Rondo over Lonzo? Yeah, I think that if Lonzo were fully healthy, this wouldn't be happening. But because he's not, they, they this is why you sign Rajon Rondo. Yes. So you can have better than replacement quality point guard play while Lonzo's recovering. It is interesting, once Lonzo is fully healthy, how quickly and easily Rondo relinquishes that starting job. But yeah, this is the to me, this is a no-brainer for the Lakers. Yeah, Lonzo's going to be the starting point guard. But I, I like Magic Johnson, and I like his imprint that he's making on Lonzo. But he also, you can only do so much from the front office. Let's bring in someone that's going to be with him every day. So Magic trust Rondo to be able to groom. Because Magic said one day, guy, one day this guy's jersey will be in the rafters in L.A. So let me bring in someone else who can help me between the front office having Rondo in the locker room on the road. I believe that's part of Magic Johnson's master plan to help Lonzo. All right, moving on. When you win back-to-back -back championships and finals MVPs, you can pretty much do what you want, which means that Kevin Durant's time with the Warriors might be, could be, possibly numbered. When asked about free agency, Durant said, quote, we will see what happens next year. Nick, do you expect Kevin Durant to stay with the Warriors after this season? Let me flip a coin here. I mean, really? No, I don't. I think it's 50-50. I think it is, I think right now Durant, I don't think Durant knows. I think he's got Rich Kleinman, who's his business partner, who they do a lot of, their, they just announced a TV series with, does a podcast series with, does investments with. 
I think he's pulling on him, hey man, you stay one more year in, o in Oakland, it's not Oakland anymore, it's San Francisco. The billionaires row with the court, it's a chance to leave before Pete. And then he's got the Twitter side of him saying, man, I'm gonna show these fools I can do this on my own. I can go win a championship in New York. I can go team up with a guy like either Jimmy Butler or Kyrie Irving and shift the balance of power. So I think I think there's going to be significant player movement this offseason. Kyrie, Jimmy Butler, Durant, there are people who are going to start talking about Anthony Davis, even though I think New Orleans will hold on him with, with your life. A lot of these guys are going to be moving. I, I'm not trying to hedge my bet here. I just, I really think it is right now about a 50-50 proposition. I think anyone acting like Durant's made up his mind, I don't think that's the case. But you absolutely should not dismiss the very real possibility that even if they three-peat, he leaves. Is there any possibility that he might go to Los Angeles with LeBron? I think that's absolutely on the board. I think the reason the Lakers fought so hard to get Luol Deng to shave exactly enough money off his salary to where they could fit in a true max deal for Kevin Durant was to leave that window open. Because they didn't need, they got Luol Deng to shave enough money off. It, it wasn't that it created a hole for Kawhi. They, Durant can make more than Kawhi. So they, they got it to where Kawhi could fit in there, obviously, but also Kevin Durant could. But if, if the reason Kevin Durant would leave Golden State would be to see if he can go do this sort of on his own, if you will, why, why would the Lakers even be an option for him? Yeah, see, I, I think it's very, very complicated. I think Kevin Durant, he's in a, a tough spot as far as what his legacy is going to be. Right. Um, any normal athlete that we've seen typically be like, like no, I'm still here. I like my situation here. It's very, very comfortable for me. Um, I don't know why he would want to leave, but for me, He's earned that right, just like at OKC. It was like, ah, uh, he's joining Golden State. I couldn't hate on it because he earned the right to. He's gone there, he's done great, but I still think there's other goals as far as basketball. And what is ultimately are they gonna say about Kevin Durant? And the opportunity, if they were to win this year, and the chance to four-peat, I just think that's just hard to turn down. But the problem is, in Golden State, if he stays there, how much credit ultimately does he get because it's different now the rules are different now once he decided to join Steph and Clay and Dre and them how we analyze him have been totally different and I just don't I don't know if staying there is the best basketball challenge for him because he has to determine that and I think that there's something pulling at him to what makes him better from a basketball standpoint and to stay in it go to state for a chance to four peat with this with this great team that they have is that the thing that does it and we, i mean we clay was asked about his pending free agency and clay was very clear man people leave to try to get the situation not I, I love it here i'm staying here now his mind could change but he was very clear durant's asked about it and like i take everything year by year and he has earned that right jenna your question is a great one which is the only mountain durant has left to climb is the LeBron Mountain is becoming the best player in the world. You would think the only way he would remove the ability to climb that mountain by teaming up yes. with him. I think sometimes we try to assign logical behavior to guys by what we would consider logical behavior mm -hmm. to guys that have not always acted logically. I I still to I this do it day every single day I, I, know, I still to this day <laughs> have Boston fans sending me cuz Kyrie had a quote this week talking about how much he loves it there. Say ah, and, and uh, are you you still think Kyrie might leave? Man, did do people not remember the quotes he had at the, the finals at the finals about <laughs> loving Cleveland about wanting to be in Cleveland always oh, got this great situation he had a great situation in Cleveland with the best player in the world and left like a lot of these guys we try to say what would we do right I just I from talking to people in the league and I, I don't mean reporters I mean people close to the players they th they all believe it is absolutely on the board that Durant could go a bunch of different places I had somebody say to me the other day that they think he's open to going back to Oklahoma City. Now that one would shock me, but I can't dismiss any possibility because Durant, the other thing with Durant is while the Lakers can give him max money, he along with LeBron and Steph are the three guys in this league that make so much money non-basketball related that they don't have to make any financial decisions based on a max salary slot. Quickly though, he does
go? Where do you might end up? I, if he, I think New York the most likely oh. option. I think the Lakers are the second most likely option if he leaves. Interesting. All right, let's get back to some football now. There are three undefeated teams left in the NFL, and the Rams are one of them. Off to a very hot start, as we all thought. But the teams that have beaten them, they've got combined one and eight record this season, and the Rams are dealing with a banged-up secondary. So a true test Thursday night versus the Vikings is exactly what the team needs. Just ask Rams head coach Sean McVay. This week provides a great challenge, uh, you know, going against an excellent team, uh, really sound in all three phases. They have great players. They're very well coached. A uh, team that went deep into the playoffs last year, and, and you know, they're, they're going to be ready to go, and, and certainly we have to as well. And it's just like anything else. You know, I thought our guys did some good things, but uh, as coaches, first and foremost, and then as players, there's things that we can look at and see if we can improve upon uh, on a short week. All right, what is the biggest challenge, CC, that the Vikings defense presents this high-powered Rams offense Thursday night? Well, the Vikings are good at every level. They have Pro Bowl players at every level. They play a number of different coverages. They can play man-to-man. -man. Um, I don't know if there's one wide receiver that they would decide to match up with Xavier Rhodes all over the field. So I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to play right and left. Oh, that's interesting. Because I thought they might have Rhodes follow Cooks. You don't think they're going to do that? This is the problem. They do so much motion. They do so many things before the snap. The Rams, they can get you confused. You can get guys running at each other. You can get a lot of natural picks.